would just ask that you two ladies probably speak up a little bit more. Sure. <clears throat> All right.
you know, pencil sketch, like you, you know, wood, sculpture, metal, like all kinds of different things. And so depending on what it is that I'm looking for, those are keywords that I'm searching out. And I'm probably at some point looking for all of that at some point. So it's very helpful. Yeah. And I've had not a whole lot of people because she's dead on exactly, we do the exact same thing. So we will sit down with a short amount of time and say we need to do our first, you know, after doing that sort of your inventory for the client, we will have photographs and sizes of all their existing artwork and then we work around it. And um, <coughs> where sometimes we start an interior based on the artwork that they have. If the client already has an art collection, then that's one of the first conversations we have before we start selecting brush and primary arts. However, if a client and a lot of clients do this now where they sell their houses furnished and the new house is a different style and they're changing everything about themselves. So they might be moving from Avondale out to Ponte and they're selling everything Mediterranean and now they're doing a coastal interior and they want everything new. And so if that's the case, then we leave the art until later. And we start with rustic sofas and colors and, and things like that. And then we start bringing in artwork and thinking about that when we get to like pictures and, and all that. So I think um, back to the question. Speed is really important for us because when you're doing a house that's 4,000 square feet or 8,000 square feet, there's a lot of art to be procured. And as much as I want to say to you that we'll just spend a whole afternoon and take the client to a gallery to look at a painting. That does happen. We just yeah. did it last week. I've done that. <laughs> but, but that's, that's, that's it's special. not the norm. It's, the norm. it's not the norm. The norm is okay. jump on and say, I'm going to go to Gray Urban Gallery. I'm going to go to Jewel Place in Boston. I'm going to jump on Hillary Whitaker. I'll see what Stella's has. I'll see what this person has, this person has. And I'm clicking through images and I'm looking for if the foyer, if I need a piece that's five by six and in the living room behind the sofa, if I need a piece that's four by eight, or I'm looking at sizes and I'm looking at images that catch my eye that I feel like my client, once you get to know your client, you're going to say, oh my God, Connie would love that, Susie would love this. And so you're just, the, the amount of um, website, um, little spreadsheet that we call art resources and yeah and it's one two three four five I don't know it's 20 pages of just galleries artists and a variety of wallpaper markings and paper work and collages and things like that prints photography uh, mixed media and so I'll pull this out if I'm going to spend the afternoon working on this Smith's art and I'll pull this out and I'll click through, you know, 30 or 40 websites in a couple of hours just skimming. So the most important thing, absolutely the most important thing, is your website has to be up to speed. Because if I get on the website and I'm sitting there and it's 
We've gotten a lot of comments on just, it's really hard to hear. If you could speak up oh, just a smidge. <laughs> Sorry, maybe just you know yell a little more. Um, okay, we'll try it without. Um, let us know in the comments if you can't hear um, after we unplug this. Tell us if it's better or worse. Um, the next couple minutes, we'll we'll pick the better option. So, uh, they said it was worse without worse. the microphone. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, we can, or we have this option for the microphone? I mean, we've been together, so we're not afraid to not be this so is, This is a wireless you can pass back and forth. Should we run a test? Testing. How's it working, everybody? Is it working better? Oh, technology. What was the question again? One day we'll get this all settled out. Um, we talked about pricing. So I know, Marsha, we've talked before, and you said, like, you, if, if, if you buy through a gallery, or not through a gallery, but say, you, say you're buying directly to an artist, um, what percentage are you looking for? You're not buying retail, obviously, and all that. And how you work commissions. Oh, I can hold it. Can you hear me? Is this good? Okay, good. I don't want to be all of a sudden screaming. I mean, I know that historically 10% is what the discounted rate is to an interior designer or design professional. Um, you know, we usually try to get at least 20% when we're reselling items. And, you know, one way to look at that is that we are an unpaid sales force for you guys. We've chatted you up for months and months and hopefully <laughs> made the sale. Um, I know that feels probably a little painful, but when, you know, that is pretty standard for everything else that we sell. 20 to 50 percent. We would never ask for that, but whatever you think you can do, um, whatever you think you can do is is appreciated. So that's what I would say about it's that. Different. It's different for every artist, and it's different for each gallery that we work with. Because some galleries just have a flat 15 percent. Um, a lot of galleries have a flat 20 percent because I know that galleries a lot of times are taking your work and and they're, it's quite a bump, like. 50% or 100% markup. Yeah, that shocked me. When you said 65% they get to keep, I mean, that shocked me. I didn't know that. that that's, well, that's, well, that's, that's, for, have, that's yeah. for that yeah. show. No, I know, but I'm just saying I didn't realize that galleries kept that much. Of, yes, it's usually about half. I didn't, I didn't realize yeah. that. So, yeah. Yeah. That's tough, and then you're thinking I have to discount it again on top of that. But if we mm -hmm. can buy direct, I mean, that's you know going to save everybody. It's going to make you more money. Exactly. Yeah, we love that. We love. I love. I like the clients to, like Marcia said. I like to get them in front of the um, artist for sure. But I like them also to feel like they're purchasing directly from the artist. 
And that is also a more personal, you know, we can sell them towels and sheets and furniture and all that stuff, but artwork is so human and it's so personal that we prefer them to buy directly from the artist and then the artist sends us back whether whatever the agreement is, 15%, 20%, and that's pretty standard. Especially if you're working, especially when we're doing commissions. So that would be something, you know, to also specify on your websites or your Instagram pages if you're willing to do that. Because a lot of times, Amanda touched on it earlier, we're looking at scale. We're looking obviously at genre, but we're looking at scale. And so if we see, if we, she and I walked the gallery before we started this, and we saw several pieces. We're like, oh, we love that, but it's so small. You know, I'd love to have it bigger. We're doing a lot of big things now. We need key pieces, like anchored pieces. So if you can say, you know, my work is available up to whatever your canvas size, whatever your sculpture size, what, you know, if you, my work ranges from this size to this size, if it's something that we're really interested in, then we're going to hone in on that. It'll be on the website. It'll tell us right away that we can contact you and start that process. And when we do that and we're commissioning, I think it's really important for our clients to be personally involved with you and them directly. So, I mean, it's a fun experience. Like I said, you guys are neat. I mean, you see things that we just don't see. And I, I love talking to my artist friends and spending time, one of whom just walked in very late. <laughs> um, but no, I love my artist friends. You guys are cool and you see things in a different way. And I think a lot of our clients, like you know, I mentioned earlier, 80 to 90 percent of my clients don't really have a collection, which means to me that they haven't spent a lot of time in your world. And so opening that up to them is, you know, really cool. It's cool for them. It's fun for me. And anytime I can step back and let the process happen, and I just get to say, I do like that. I change that a little bit, but I just get out of the way. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a gift. So mm -hmm. that so brings me to the next question, which is specifically about doing business with local artists. Um, what, do you, what would you say your percentage is of local art versus, you know, art that you're looking in different places all around the country? And also, um, is that something that your clients are interested in, or is it something that you ever um, educate them on? And maybe the importance of, of buying local art and how you know, exciting that is. Well, I'll take this one first because that's so interesting. I had... My first client about three years ago that specifically said, and this was probably the largest, most elegant home we've ever worked on. It was enormous. Um, and <laughs> it was a palace. It was a four-year project for us. And um, we, had, we had been to New York. I had been to all these different cities thinking about all this great artwork that we were going to put in this house. And then the client says, by the way, we want to support local artists. I only want local art in this house. And this was, and I was like, wow, okay. So, I mean, that was really exciting. I did have some things in mind that I was sort of planning for non-local artists. But I was also really, really excited because I knew this was going to refresh everything inside of me to really dig deeper. And I had several local artists that I already loved, that I had already worked with, and some that I love their work that I had not had the opportunity to work with yet. So it really pushed us. So I love when that happens and I love supporting local art artists. And we love it because it's easy to get in if we do a custom commission, which we do a lot of times, that it's so easy for us to say, you know, do a color palette for us on a board or do an artist rendering. Start, let's start with a sketch or, you know, bring over two or three paintings that, you know, have the darker background or have this or that. And so it's sort of a lot easier for us to go back and forth with a local artist than trying to do that with somebody who's, you know, from Chicago or L.A. Um, it's less costly and it's quicker. So uh, we do love that. Yeah, I mean, I'll just layer on to that. Everything she said is spot on. And like a lot of the homes that we do, or, you know, not a lot, I'd say 50% are second, third, fourth homes. So it's not their primary residence. And because of that, they're really in, into having a look from the local area. I've worked with photographers before and been like, hey, go out on the beach and shoot sea oats or whatever, you know, because they're looking for that local feel for the house. So it's really, if you, you know, again, commissioning and being willing to go out and do that, I think buying local, everybody's aware of that right now. 
there's been a lot of, you know, a lot of talk lately about just local small businesses trying to survive this COVID situation. And then before that, it was Amazon taking over the world. And I think everybody is pretty aware that supporting local is a good thing to do when you can. So we try to do it as often as we can. Sometimes, you know, that's, it's not possible to do that. And, and then I just think to myself, well, I'm supporting an artist that lives somewhere else, you know. So just having, buying original art, I would say, is something that I talk to my clients a lot about versus buying poster art or, you know, Filler, that's a lovely, you see that I hesitated. I have a way of putting things sometimes that's abrasive, and I, you know, somebody painted that thing somewhere down the road, but I, <laughs> so I don't mean to be offensive, but I, I really, really, really strongly push all of my clients to have original pieces in every project, in every room. If we have to do something that's a poster, um, usually it's just going to be down a back hall in a laundry room somewhere far, far away where nobody, but I want to see sculpture when you pull in the driveway. I want photography. I want I want the wow factor. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just, you know, the sky's the limit. So, yeah. I don't know if I answered a question or went down a rabbit hole. There you go. Oh, it's a good uh, rabbit hole. Okay. <laughs> that was my next question, actually, about, you know, educating your clients. Educating your clients on buying, you know, original artwork rather than prints. Because I think that people who... Um, I think that people who aren't educated, and maybe, I don't mean edu educated in the art world, they don't know better, and they see a beautiful print, and they're like, oh, I can get that at Michael's. Um, yeah. And it's so important to have, to have original artwork in your home. And yes, it is expensive, but it, it, you are supporting an artist, and you are, I mean, I have, you've been in my, I, I mean, we all have original artwork in our houses, and it's, it really, it, it just makes me happy to see it every time. I have. I bought one of his years ago, and yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see. Um, we we handed a lot of them. You want to touch a little bit on the difference between residential and commercial? Just a little. We can get into it in our workshop if you'd like. Later. Start handing it to me. You go. I'll do. It's easy. I'm a commercial. Marsha does more commercial than I do. I'm probably. 98% residential, and you probably do a little more. So I'm, I'll say what I think, and she can very happily correct me because I might not. But in a residential project, what we would consider filler art, we might go somewhere like Zentique or Windover or Left Bank or somewhere like that and do, you know, laundry rooms, back hallways, or, you know, Everything depends on the budget. So if we do the budget right at the beginning of the project and when you're putting in all the artwork and the furniture and draperies and wall covering and, and, and then you put that little tiny little line that says artwork and accessories and they're huge numbers. And if you get that right at the beginning of the project and the client agrees to it and they're prepared and they have put that money aside and they know it's one of the last things they're going to spend um, with the landscape artists probably and us with accessories and artwork. If they're prepared for that properly, it does not become an issue and it's part of the project. If that budget isn't done properly or there's a lot of mind changing and they really overspend, then the artwork gets squeezed at the end and that's where we end up with some filler art and so we never ever ever put filler art in a foyer a dining room a living room a master bedroom maybe in children's bedrooms absolutely in a laundry room in a hallway in a mud bathroom in a mud room we might do you know some great prints or something like that but um, when you do commercial art when you do commercial work I think you probably have more commercial artwork and a few key originals. Do you agree? Yes, I do. I mean, I do agree. You know, it's interesting that we're talking about this whole print situation because somebody, I, I don't know who painted them, but those cute Florida paintings that are in the back, those are so great. Um, and I love that you turned them into prints, so I noticed that. So that's just something to think about, too, if your artwork translates into a print. Because, you know, there are times when budget 
we're at the end, we still need a few pieces, you know, and that's a nice way of, of getting something kind of fun or, or was it gicle? Gicle? Is that, am I saying that right? Um, that's another, you know, thought for that. Um, so, yeah, so for commercial work, so I would say, you know, Trowbridge and Left Bank and stuff like that, we, you know, I have looked at, but I, I, I've been pretty blessed. The last two commercial projects that I did, I have, I placed all original art and I worked with a gallery, yeah. Um, so I chose to work with a gallery owner because I wanted a variety and I didn't have the time or the design fee to spend, as I do in residential, um, to spend searching for artwork. So with commercial work, it's a lot more sort of down and dirty, fast, 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 but you still want it to be beautiful, obviously. And so I just chose to find a gallery and work with the gallery. And I, we met several times, and we looked through lots of portfolios, and we talked to different artists, and we commissioned some stuff, and we did all these things um, to get to the end result. And the end result was every single piece, including the restroom pieces, awesome. which is so great, um, ended up original art. We even had one of the artists painted the male and female um, signs for the doors. So yeah. So anyway, so, you know, it just, again, but that's all budgeting, and it's the vision of the client, too. So, like, I know with MD Anderson that just came in, I know they placed a ton of original art um, through, you know, throughout that wonderful building, and I think they just have a heart for, you know, beautiful art. Um, so I think it just depends on the budget and it depends on the client. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, so we have Kate, who commented on Facebook, um, asking about, um, do you also rent art for staging, and how much does an artist charge for this um, as a percentage of what the piece sells for? Um, so I don't think, whoop, I don't think that ni neither Amanda nor I stage. Do you stage? Okay. So we don't stage. However, there are companies in Jacksonville that do do this, and I know that they do rent um, their furniture and accessories. And I don't know about artwork, but I actually did work with a realtor who was working with a stager who just, I'm friends with her, and she wanted an interior designer's you know, opinion. So I went over there. It wasn't to undo anything they did, but I just know that that's out there. I just, I can't advise you know, about that because I don't do it. And then I have a comment on that. Um, there has been a few instances where <clears throat> the client really wanted to take their time with artwork and every single piece was so special or commissioned and they didn't want to work on 12 paintings at one time. So when the project is completed and all their furniture and draperies and everything was moved in, then we started the art process. And that's not our ideal way of working because we love to do a finished project and photograph it. But every now and then you have a client that just says, we travel a lot, we want to buy artwork when we travel, so we'll do some placeholders and wait. But we have um, once or twice had to, or wanted, chose to, photograph a finished interior when the artwork wasn't complete. And so we will call like Hillary Whitaker Gallery or Scott at Stellar's or someone and make an agreement with them that can we come in and can we choose artwork and can we borrow it for these two or three days and we give them credit on social media and on the website or whatever but they are happy to loan it because a lot of times out of all that they might sell a piece well I was just gonna say I can, I can get it I have that same story I had a house and my and it was a residence up in Amelia Island on the ocean and he was convinced, the owner, that he did not like art. So imagine hearing that. You know, I have this passion for art. I have a problem. I have an art problem, and I'm constantly rotating things at my house because I have too much, but I love it. So when he told me no art, I thought I would die. Then I picked myself off the floor, and I went, okay, fine. Um, I want to photograph the project. So I called Hillary, and she was so cool and sweet. And we went out there and just hung temporarily hung art 
Well, the happy story for everybody involved was the project ended up getting published in Florida Design, and full credit went to the artist, and my client saw the walls and went, oh, yeah, I do need some things. And so he ended up, I know, he ended up buying some things. So that does happen as, you know, if you can be friendly and, and kind of work with us on that. I know that's not really the staging question, um, but as far as interior designers, I think we run into that situation probably more than renting, um, like, for staging and stuff like that. So We will borrow we will. We would love to. With the intent of selling. With the, oh, we're, we're going to try. Photographing it and putting you on social media. So we'll yeah. give. Um, if we if we borrow art, we make sure we give you a lot of credit and exposure. Shouts out and credit and all kinds of. That's where that hashtag thing comes in and the little at symbol, which means something else. I'm yes. told. I don't do that. I'm not good at it. We do it a lot, but I don't. You want to? You want to go? For it? No, it's fun. It's kind of funny that you ask because right now I'm working with a client and we want to paint the bottom of the pool. Oh my God. <laughs> I know. <clears throat> so you know, it happens. Like the last time I needed a sort of a muralist, I guess, was for a foyer, and we just did this graffiti kind of a thing. Um, so it does come up, probably not as often as what I think we're talking about tonight, paintings and photography and, you know, sculpture and stuff like that. But it does come up. So it's good to know you guys, too. So. And we are working on a project that um, is going to install in November. And <clears throat> it's a, sort of a West Indies or BVI, British Virgin Islands genre. And we have a mixture of antiques and some of the clients' existing few pieces. They're, they're, their art collection, and they are serious art investors. So they have Van Gogh and Monet. They've got real, real, real art. So we are like, what are we going to do? So um, we thought, and the client loves these Gracie panels that are being hand-painted in their French it's French wall covering that's like murals that comes in rolls, and they're absolutely gorgeous. So we're doing that in part of the house. So my senior project designer and myself said, okay, this is the main living room wall. We said, we really need a tremendous piece that is different. And when you're looking at that genre of work and the history and the time, that we said, wouldn't it be amazing to do one of those brass rods with the chains coming down all the way behind down behind the sofa and have a mural painted with the palm trees and the maritime ships and the boats and and find the most fabulous local artist because we told the client we wanted to use a local artist and um, so we had her sold on that we thought it was just a great idea and then about a week later, they called us and said, well, we really want to continue with the investment art. And they got with Christie's. And now we're choosing from some pretty major, incredible pieces. But it's going to be a lot of small pieces on a wall, which is the complete opposite of what we were thinking. But it's our job to say, I'm not moving in. This is not my house. I need to make this the very best for what you want for your vision. And we stated our case. We even did little sketches and renderings. And we put a PowerPoint together. And we sold it pretty darn good. But I thought I was going to get to do a mural. And it's been, it's, been a, it's been a long time because they were really popular for a while. And then they sort of fell out of popularity. But I think color is coming back in style, thank God. Um, and I do think those kind of things are going to start coming back you know the picture mosaics and the murals and you know we just had a lot of that in the 90s and so I think it went out for a while and I do think it's coming back in and more richer colors and and all that so keep your fingers crossed yeah
Oh, repeat the question. Okay, you repeat the question. Remember. Okay, if I'm, <laughs> oh, jeez. Pressure. The question on the table is, he, yes, the artist um, is saying that he's run into the situation where a client, a potential client, is looking for a discount, and how do we approach that? And framing. Yes. What, what do we do about framing? So if the piece is already framed and the client doesn't want the frame, what do we do about that? Sure. All right. I'll start. I'll start. Um, I haven't had a client really ask that for that. I, ha I have. I've had my business for 27 years. So I won't say that I haven't run into that question before. But I think the way that we create our budgets and the way we preface what we're doing and I know Marsha's the same way. We, our firm is not into smoke and mirrors, so we're not hiding this and that, and we're not finding some piece and doubling or tripling it and lying, you know. So right off the bat, I will say, this is what you're doing. Here is your budget. Are we still comfortable in this area? This is what I'm thinking. These are the artists I'm looking at. And just so you know, we do not put our furniture mark up on artwork. We take the artist's price and then you will buy from the artist, and then he will give us back a portion of a furniture budget, which would be anywhere between 10 and 20%. The artist will give to us. So that kind of lets the client know to not be asking you for a discount when you're already paying us a commission. So I don't find that really ever to be a problem. And if I know the client is in a comfort range of five or six thousand dollars for a piece of artwork, then I'm not going to show them a piece that's fifteen or twenty. I might show them a piece that's eight, you know. But I think it's really important to get a feel for the client. And some of our clients, they can do whatever they want. They really can. So you just have to figure out what they love. Um, I always tell our clients that. We will decide per piece if it's going to be gallery wrapped and finished on the side or if we need to choose framing and that is not included in the artwork ever. Now once in a while I am doing um, some artwork from Atlanta right now and the client is including some gorgeous walnut framing that is just a very thin, you know, side piece like, what do you call that again? When it just, uh, a floater, thank you. <laughs> floater they're so back and the artist included that and gave us a light finish a cherry finish or a dark wenge finish so we had three to choose from and it was a floater and it wasn't veneered it was a beautiful wood stained beautiful piece so we chose from that but nine times out of ten we'll choose all the artwork and then if we do the artwork some of it with Hillary will we'll do it there or we do a lot of framing at Cheo framing or with Scott at Stellar's or whatever, but we pretty much just tell the clients that that's not included unless, you know, a lot of pieces don't need a frame. And floaters aren't too expensive, so. But, I mean, that was going to be my only suggestion on the framing was just to do something super simple and, you know, just let them know that it's, you know, included in the price, but there's not a discount if they don't want it and just be done with it. But I don't, I, again, I don't have that issue either. When we're doing whole projects, it's kind of a non-issue, the whole discount thing. Uh, we've done the budget. We've gotten it approved. We know the number of pieces. We know the sizes. We know what we're looking for. So it just is what it is. When I have had that, I have had that question. And when I have had that question, it's usually like one piece. If I you know, just need one little piece, and then that will come up sometimes depending on the client. I'll either choose to extend my discount to them, which is why you know, we talked a little bit about discounting earlier. And if it's a twenty, if you're willing to give a twenty percent to a to a designer, then I'll offer them ten or fifteen, and then that still covers my time for finding it. But then it's giving them a little something that doesn't happen often. It's you know again, it's just when we're doing that one piece, and it has to be a really good client. Otherwise, you know, it just is kind of a non-issue. So, agreed. <laughs>
Um, I'll describe the perfect website to you. If we're <laughs> that you go to the artist's website, and on the landing page is a really great piece of art that is fairly typical of their style, so that you can see right away, oh, that's the person I was looking for. That's what I thought I was going to, or no, oh gosh, that's not the girl I was thinking, it's the other Lisa. You know, so, so right away you're like, yep, this is the girl, that it isn't just a black page with a bunch of writing and I have to read all this stuff. So that's not good. So then I would definitely have it organized by original artwork. If you do um, Gicle, prints, reproductions, anything like that, I would list those and keep them very separate. And the, f the first thing would be original artwork, and then when you click on original artwork, I would go by scale, that smaller pieces or extra large format or however you want to, because when, when you're one of us or the other interior designers or architects out there that need a really large piece of artwork for I'll a foyer, you just do not want to be clicking through hundreds of little tiny pieces this big when you know you need a six by six. You've just got to be able to get to what you need quickly. If you don't get there quickly, you get off and you get on another website. So it's just organization, keeping it really simple. And, and I do, you know, I agree. I mean, we always start with the large piece first, so whatever that is. If, it's, if we need sculpture, if we need a wood carving, if whatever, painting, it's always the big piece first, so. Yeah, the you can, the yeah, well, always impact pieces. impact pieces, yeah, for sure. I'm not sure if I spoke to you about this or not, but we started something um, on our website in the Cultural Council called the Arts Directory of Greater Jacksonville. Um, and basically, it's you can go on our website, and it's a wonderful portal, let's call it, um, where people can go on, and for the enhanced listing, it's $35 a year. That It's basically a website of your own. You can put unlimited images, unlimited text, your resume, your this is on sale, this is a special, This I'm having this workshop. And it's a great resource because for you all, you know, as it grows, um, and also when you when you sign up, there's tags. We've done every single sculpture, ceramics, fine art. I mean, every single thing that you can think of. And now that you're saying that, we should do large paintings, small paintings. That's a good one to do too. Um, but when you go on, you can see. You can do the keywords and look at it and find things. So. Um, you know, as it grows, it's a, it's a great resource for you guys, too. So if, I mean, just go to our website if you're interested in being part of it. You can also separate your artwork by genre. Yeah. So if you happen to have, you know, painting, oil paintings, and photo ooh, photography. Yeah. Or, oh, okay. Does it matter? Yeah, I think separating by genre, sorry, I didn't mean to butt in there, but I just thought about that. Sometimes you're just for sure looking for a painting, sometimes you're looking for multimedia, sometimes you're looking for photography. So it's great to separate it that way too, sorry. Um, yeah, so it's the cultural culturalcouncil.org, and on it, it says um, arts directory, and you can go on there and... Um, you can do the basic listing, which is always free, and it just lists your name, and you can just one little thumbnail and what you do and your contact information. Um, but for something like that, it's not really helpful necessarily, except to get your name out there. But for something like this, um, you know, you just you say watercolor, and all the watercolors there, you can s click on it and see everyone, the pictures, and it's just helpful to get an idea of who's out there. Um, Okay, I guess my final question is just, um, what's the best way for artists to get their work in front of designers? Just because I butt in last time, so I'm trying to be polite. I don't know. Um, well, you know, it's funny because as you were just talking, I was thinking, I don't, are there any faux artists here tonight or watching on Facebook? I can't see you. But we haven't really addressed that, and that's an art form that we use constantly, constantly, constantly. So if you're out there and you're watching... Um, for you, I would say sampling. Mm -hmm. If we, you know, if you're out there and you 
want to swing by um, our studios, we will always make time, usually, to meet with you, um, having a portfolio or an online presence. I think a lot of the artists, like in that format that I work with, don't spend a lot of time shooting their work, but they'll like take a picture on a scaffold or, or wherever they are. Um, those kinds of fun things, the muralists that are out here, get some of those shots of you working on in the field. I mean, that stuff is really cool. If you have samples that you can you know, bring over to our studios that we can maybe have just little small pieces to show Venetian plaster or ceruced oak or whatever it is that we're, metallics, whatever we're doing. So um, other than that, I think, you know, if you, obviously this is a great resource. I mean, I'm looking around and I'm seeing 30 different artists represented in this one space. I think, gal you know, working with a gallery is always a great idea. There are art brokers. Um, those are, you know, great resources too. Um, I don't know what else. I thought about. I was thinking about something. It's so hard with um, since this whole COVID thing. I think a lot of businesses, including ours, the hours are down, and for such a long time, all of my designers have young children, and so they're wanting to get their work done and get out of the office and get home because of the situations with the school and everything. So we do ours definitely by appointment only. Um, if somebody just stops by during the day, chances are we're going to be in a meeting and we're not going to stop. But I think there is great value to any salesperson. And really, even though you're an artist, you have to sell yourself. So you're in sales too. So um, if, you did, if you took a small painting this big or a finish or something like that and you put your business card and your bio a link to your website, all of your information concisely, and dropped it by Studio M Interiors or Amanda Webster Design Interiors and just said, I'm just leaving this here. Put it in the lunchroom. Put it in the library. Put it in the foyer. Just I'll leave it here for a week and make an appointment. Say, I will be back to pick it up on Monday morning. And then every designer in our studio is going to see that. And it's going to be sitting in our kitchen for a week. And so... I think that works for all different products because I know when COVID started, we used to do these lunch and learns and we'd have reps come in and buy everybody lunch and everybody would stop for an hour and sit and have a free lunch. But it wasn't free for the owner of the business because you're paying seven people who normally are billing at $150 an hour and now you're paying them and they're not billing. So we had to stop doing that. So a lot of people do still call us and say, oh, I want to do a lunch for your designers. And we say, well, we're not doing that anymore um, because everybody wants to be out the door at quarter to five. And so the best thing I can tell you is to have a, you know, a good looking small, you know, brochure or recap of your work or who you are, you know, website card, whatever, and just do the drop by thing and just leave it for a while. And I think that has worked for a lot of people that I know. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking as you were talking, I, um, at one of your events, Ellen, there was a, one of the artists had hand painted her business cards. I took, I took four. Because <laughs> each one was different, and I, I have them out. So, I mean, if you can establish yourself that way in some way, if, you're, if the materials you are leaving behind for us can represent your work in some you know, artistically thoughtful way that's not just normal. I think that's nice. I mean, we're all trying to establish ourselves as, as different. But anyway, I just, I'm admitting that to you now. <laughs> but it was really cool. So, I mean, it was, it was just neat. I had never seen anybody hand paint their, their business cards like that. And they were mixed media, so they had a little 3D relief to them. They're, they were just beautiful. So, I have them. <laughs> I have them. I actually did frame them. I did. <laughs> In frames this big. <laughs> no, I didn't go that. They're small, but they're they're hung vertically, and they're beautiful. And I walk by them every day. I love them. So that was that's awesome. You know, that that is awesome. Card, so. All right. well, yes. Anything else? That was that's the first question. So if anybody else have any, has any questions, but um, other than that, we did. We go ahead. Did you say something? I have one thing. Yeah. I was gonna mention. Yeah. Can I mention it? Okay. I don't know. Since we're done, um, I don't know if this is going to have any merit to anybody. It's a book that I saw on Instagram. Again, on Instagram, everything's on Instagram. I brought one. You did? 
Look at you. There's a couple of books that are really cool. This is one of my favorite artists. Okay, well, so we read this and I'll give that to you. Hers is more interesting. I just printed out the little quotes. So anyway, I wanted to read this to you guys because I thought it was very timely. It popped up on Instagram a week ago. And I was like, oh, cool, I'm, you know, doing this thing in a week, and this sounds neat. So I ordered the book. I was hoping to read it before I came. It did not show up. So I can't tell you whether you should run out and buy this book or not, but I thought this quote was interesting, and if it sounds like something you want to look into, um, do that. But here's the quote. It's gallery owner to artist. So that we're a little different because we're not a gallery owner, but still, I'm sure you guys work with gallery owners. It says, first and foremost, they show me that they're professionals. They've defined themselves as an artist, they have a clear elevator speech, and it's clear they know who they are talking to. They treat gallery owners with respect and have selected their very best work. Five to six pieces should suffice to present in a concise and clear way. Any gallery owner would be happy to work with someone like this. And the name of that book is called Secrets of the Art World, Getting Real About the Process, Business, and Selling of Your Work. So, you know, I ordered it, I'm going to read it. There was another book I read years ago called Seven Days in the Art World, which if you've never read that, it's fascinating. It goes through Art Basel and Sotheby's and all kinds of really cool. There was a, a magazine publication that I don't even know if it's still published, but, but that, that was a really cool book too. So, and then you have a cool book. I have a cool book. And this is a totally different kind of book, but this is a book that an artist, Thomas Swanston, that I like his artwork very much, and... Um, we saw his art somewhere, we just noticed it somewhere, and gave him a call. And he said, oh, let me send you a few things. And he sent us some little paper samples with, you know, some interesting little samples, I suppose. I don't know how to describe them. I did not frame them, but I'm going to try and find those things. But he sent us this book of his work. And, you know, it sounds like, oh, that sounds so, you know, such an expense to go to. Sorry, thank you. But we looked into this as a design firm, and we ended up making our own little books that are about this big. I should have brought one. But it was like probably our top maybe 10 or 15 photographs of our favorite interiors, and we give them to a client if they come and interview with us in person, which doesn't happen that much anymore. It's interesting. <laughs> they just call you from Instagram and hire you to do their house. But anyway... Um, or a, a new con if we work with a contractor for the first time and we haven't worked with them before, I will take one and just leave it on the table at the meeting. But it's just a, a, a book of your artwork. And this fella did an incredible job. And he numbered his pieces. And, um, you know, when you look at this presentation, you think, oh, my gosh, I bet his artwork is a fortune. And it's, it's actually really doable. So I just thought it was incredible. So he sent this to us, and I have pulled this book out in a variety of meetings and said, you know, we have so many different artists that we work with. This is one that we love, and we just put the book on the table. And it's just, it's just wonderful when it's right for the project, but it's a wonderful presentation. And, you know, it's something that you can do on a very small scale that is not really expensive, or you could do it on a bigger scale like this fella did. But I love this, and we keep it in our conference room. So, yeah. I feel like we came full circles. We, we started with me talking about, you know, being in the gallery 10, 15 years ago and having, reading the books mm -hmm. and the catalogs and everything. Then we went online. But really, I mean, online's awesome, but there is something to be said for something tangible, tactile in front of you. So... Yeah, for sure. Anyway, this was great, ladies. And again, you know, we're talking about maybe doing a larger one with adding a gallery owner, an art consultant, a big commercial consultant. So maybe we'll do something in the beginning of the year. Um, so think of more questions if everyone has them that we can touch on. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thanks for joining us on Facebook. And have a good night.